Hello there. Happy Sunday to you. <laughs> I'm laughing because, okay, tell you what, let me just go ahead and preface this video with an apology. Either that or you should thank me for an early Christmas present. But what I'm going to talk about today is a 2018 report that, God, I, I thought was dead back then. I don't know how it got resurrected. Yeah, actually, I do know how it got resurrected. Because the people out there who believe in all positive training with your dog, all positive relationship, meaning never correct your dog, never say anything bad to your dog, or never make your dog do anything, they're constantly grasping onto every mirage that comes along, any sort of hope, no matter how desperate and how ridiculous it sounds, to support their baseless claim and this is what this is and i'm telling you what it's the absolute truth does when using baby talk does it improve our bond with our dogs now i'll tell you what you can't make this stuff up this is real this is the real deal this came from a report from the bbc and it was a study that was done by scientists at the university of york again back in 2018 here we go <laughs> obviously they have a lot of money over there to spend and, you know, let's don't, let's don't put it towards trying to figure out the economy, trying to keep people safe in the world, trying to improve quality of lives for animals and people. Let's just kind of just dive into baby talk. Okay, I promise I'm going to do the best I can. Here we go. Okay, so let's just get right into it and get this thing over with. This is kind of like pulling off a Band-Aid. Let's just yank it off. <laughs> and hopefully I'll bury it for, for good, put a tourniquet on and maybe it'll just die. Maybe someone forget to take the tourniquet off, the limb would just fall off. Let's just get after it. Okay, so in this study that was done, again, at the University of York over in England, they said that the, basically the end results was that dogs seem more likely to favor a speaker who uses a high pitch versus a normal voice. And then they went on to make a claim that that would, therefore, increase our bond with our dogs. Okay, Sherlock. Wow, that was just brilliant. Yeah, what do you think is associated with higher voices? How about food? Hey, would you like a treat? Yeah, hey, are you ready to eat? Time to eat. Ready to eat? Yeah. How about attention? Oh, my little boy, I love you to death. I love you. Love. Did you miss me? I've been at work all day long. Did you miss me? Did you miss me? Yeah, how about petting? Oh, 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 you love it, don't you? You love it, love I love giving you pet. You love those belly rubs. You love those belly rubs. Don't you love those belly rubs? Of course you love those belly rubs. Why wouldn't you love those belly rubs? I would like those belly rubs. And activities. You want to go for a walk? Hey, you want to play ball? Let's go do that. Yeah. Okay. And a normal voice, normal voice, I'm sorry, normal voice, what, is it, what does it mean to a dog? Probably, uh, number one, uh, I'm not talking to you. Yeah, I'm having a normal conversation with someone else. In other words, if you want a signal to be effective, the more directional it is, meaning it's in your direction, the more effective it's going to be. But I'm not talking to you. And besides that, even if I am talking to you, even if I'm providing a directional signal to you, hey, good luck saying a lot of obedience, standard obedience commands in a high-pitched voice. I know I have a difficult time doing it. For example, heal. <coughs> that actually hurt. Uh, down. Sit. Stay. Go to your place. Oh. Off. <laughs> okay, I pro I promise I'll do better. Get, but just give me a break. Are you kidding me? So let me just get a little bit further in this thing. So they were even embarrassed. They were even embarrassed in their own study to use the term baby talk, even though that had to be the title to catch your attention. But they were embarrassed. So they called it dog directed speech. So in other words, they just went ahead and just threw this blanket statement out there. Just, they're calling it baby talk. It's dog-directed speech. And whether humans did this simply because they view pets in the same ways as babies, meaning do we give baby talk to dogs because we view them as babies? Uh, yes, we do. We do. And that is a bit of a problem. Not saying you can't do it some of the time. You know, when you have a puppy, it's hard not to baby talk it. That's just us humans. That's the nurturing in us. That's the oxytocin that's flowing through our brains. Attachment and bonding. That's just what we do when we older adults have offspring or any artificial offspring like a dog. We have a tendency to want to baby it, to protect it. That's just natural. I get it. Have I ever baby talked a dog? Maybe once. I kid you not. 
I didn't even do it to my own kids. I just didn't. It's just, I wasn't baby talked when I was young. I wasn't imprinted in a baby talk. My mother was tougher than nails. And of course, if you've read Embracing the Wild and Your Dog, you understand the mentor in which I was raised under. Tougher than nails. And in my young adulthood in the military, oh, there was no baby talk. I'm just not used to it. I'm used to achieving results without having to baby talk. So that's just me. That's just me personally. I don't care if you do it or not. But again, here's what I'm getting to with this whole thing. During the test, phrases such as, you're a good dog, and shall we go for a walk, were used. Next, another person would talk to the animal in a normal, non-dog-directed speech and use content that wasn't even dog-related. For instance, I went to the cinema last night. So you really expected the dog to respond to you saying to someone else, not even directing it in the, to the dog. I went to the cinema last night. And you really think that's a fair comparison to what a good boy. You want to go for a walk? Really? You think that's a fair comparison? Okay. The speakers then mixed dog directed speech with non dog related words. All right. So you might as well just throw in scuba knock. And have your dog look at you with that far away look, glazed eyes, and thinking, what the heck did this biped come up with now? Um, and normal speech with dog-related words. So, in other words, they just did a comparison. Scientists found that dogs were more likely to want to spend time with a speaker who had used both dog-directed speech. This is going called baby talk, because that's what you really mean. And dog-related content. Oh, God, this suggests that adult dogs need to hear dog-related words. Yes, dog-related words. Stop right there. Dogs need to hear dog-related words if you're talking to a dog, if you want to influence your dog's behavior. But they go on. Again, this suggests that adult dogs need to hear dog-relevant words spoken in a high-pitched, emotional voice in order to find it relevant. Okay, can I just say one thing? Obviously, whoever conducted this test never spent even one minute in the wild observing the communication between adults and their offspring. Never will you hear a wolf use anything similar to baby talk. Nor a lion, a hyena, East African hunting dogs, none of the animals I've studied in my lifetime. Not one time. Remember, what is one of the primary duties outside of providing life-sustaining nourishment to your offspring? Protecting them. When you talk like them, when you act like them, then someone is left wondering, do you have the ability to protect me? Yeah, you sound like me. One of the reasons why a lot of young wolf cubs and young lions, hyenas, East African hunting dogs are pinned to the ground by the adults is not just to show them who is dominant at that moment. No, more importantly, I can protect you. I can. And I've given many videos about an animal's ability to assess the protection capabilities, the resource holding abilities of other animals. And if they're not good at assessing it in another animal, they're darn good about assessing their own. When you act like a baby, you talk like a baby in the animal kingdom, you are a baby. And that means push come to show, should a threat show up in our camp, who needs to deal with that threat? Your dog is left feeling, you know, I guess I'm going to have to take care of this. I guess I'm going to have to deal with it. And sure enough, that's what they do while you don't do anything. You're camped out on your sofa. And then you act suddenly surprised when two years passes and your dog is hitting your door like a freight train. Your dog is lunging at people that pass by you on a sidewalk. Your dog is pitching an ever-loving fit anytime anyone comes over to your house. Anytime there's anyone in your backyard doing repairs on your pool or scooping your yard or doing any sort of work. And you wonder why? Yeah, you showed them a long time ago during the most impressional periods in their lives that you were inadequate to deal with the threats. They were. 
They were bariatic. You acted like a baby. You talked like a baby. And besides that, the best signals in the world are the ones who just come naturally from you. Hence why I tell everyone all the time, we all get a customized dog. We sound different. Our voice inflections are different. Some of us just have a naturally high voice. Some do not. Some have a gravelly voice. Some have a more even tone. And our gestures are all different. We're just, we're individuals. And therefore, we give individual signals to our dog. And our dogs are left learning how to interpret our signals as individuals. What do we say? I've had many clients who the guy in part of the relationship spoke Spanish. The wife spoke Czech or German. And then here comes me speaking something similar to English. And the dog was able to interpret all of those with ease once they were shown, once the pairing with the word occurred. So again, I don't think we have to baby talk our dogs to make them bond with us more. Try feeding them. Try protecting them. Try being reasonable with them, engaging in social play that minus the baby talk. How about if you just wrap it all up with, I love you to death, but I'm telling you why I am more than capable of taking care of you if a threat comes in this camp. I can do it. Now, when you get older and I get older with you, maybe those roles will switch a little bit. I'll lean on you, friend. Any sort of danger comes in our camp, you take care of it. But that's going to be something that is established through normal everyday activities, normal voices, voices that don't change a stereotype signal. I don't pull up the red lights in which the light shines more bright on some days than others. No, I don't need that. So again, a bunch of hogwash. Good Lord. You know, and then you add to it, it may, it's just, you know, I read a report that was in the USA Today, and it was a report done by the University of Winston-Salem, North Carolina, I think it's back in 2016, 2017, which showed that the grip strength of young men between the ages of 20 and 34 was significantly weaker in comparison to the grip strength of young men back in 1985. And now just recently, as of three months ago, a report came out that was in the Triad Business Journal that showed that 14.7% of the men that are conducting video conferencing for their jobs, for their profession, are doing so wearing their whitey tidies. And just so you know, I am not. In comparison to 4.7% of the women who are doing the same thing. So now, not only is our grip strength becoming weaker, so we can't even handle our dogs the way we used to, not only do we not take our jobs seriously enough to dress for them, get out of your bed, make your bed, get dressed. You dress sloppy, you think sloppy. You only dress halfway, you think halfway. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking to you. Your dog needs more than that from you. It needs all of you present, not half of you. And then now you're going to baby talk it? That's what you're going to do, really. You're going to give all your commands and baby talk, baby gibberish, at a high-pitched voice. If that's you, do yourself a favor. Don't go watch the replays of the miniseries I did on survival knowledge and how to survive and how to help your dog survive and how that relates to training and caring for your dog. Because you're not going to make it. So don't even bother wasting your time. Guys, this is crap, BS. I wish I could use other words on this live. Don't do it. It's okay to do it and play. Have some fun every now and then. Who, who, nothing wrong with that. I've said that. I've dressed up my dogs. I have baby talked once. I don't know. Care price have done it twice. So what? That was okay. But when I really meant it, when I truly meant it, you for you to do something i was there to influence your behavior in a way that is required of our relationship there is no baby talk okay well that was an early christmas present for you i'm actually sorry i kind of wasted one of my 365 videos on this topic 
but I felt it was my duty to do so anytime and every time something stupid is brought up there and then put in a context. In fact, when I read this post, this was a post that was put out there, and they said in the post, oh, proof once again that you don't have to thrust out your chest and dominate your dog. That wasn't even in the article. So, no, you're right. You don't always have to thrust out your chest and dominate your dog full time. I've talked about that many times. However, what is required if you want to talk about an article is reading comprehension. That is required. All right, guys, I'm done with this thing. I hope I buried it. I don't want to see it again. You don't want to see it again. I'm out of here. Tomorrow, I'm going to check back in with you, and we're going to talk about something that's really important. And we're just going to keep doing that for the remainder of the 365. Hang in there. Take care.